Welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to render Z-depth in Maya. Um, this particular technique is actually pretty simple and very user-friendly, I found, um, because you can actually see the Z-depth in the viewport if you're using viewport 2.0, uh, which is super handy because you don't have to guess a number, put in values, render it, check and see if it looks good. You can just see if it looks good right in the viewport, which I think is great. Um, so what you'll want to start, well, what I want normally is this um, this resolution gate it helps me visualize what my render is going to be. So you can start with that if you want. Um, you can also skip that. It's not super important. What is important is you have 3D things in your scene. Uh, so you want to select all of those. I just have this one model here. Everything's merged. Um, so I'm just going to be selecting this. But what you'll want to do is, is select everything you want this Z depth to be affecting. So once you've done that, you want to go down here into this this uh, the channel editor, the channel box area, and instead of in display where it is by default, where your layers would be, you want to go over here to render, and this is where you'll get to see what Maya renders when you render. So this is the normal render layer, the master layer. Uh, so when you when you hit render, it's just the default what you see what you render. It's there you go, there it is. Um, we want to make a new one because we don't want to render just the normal stuff. Um, so with our stuff selected here, with our assets selected, you want to click this button, create new layer, and assign selected objects. It's over here in the corner of the blue ball. Click that, and we get a fresh new layer. And when you click on the layer itself, you'll see that the scene turns black. Um, that's normal. Don't worry about that. Um, you'll want to go up to the attribute editor up here, and you want to find that new layer that we just made. So actually, for, for ease, let's go back to the channel channel editor, we'll just name it um, Z depth. So Z depth. There, and that'll make it easier to find. So we'll go back to the attributes. And then there it is, Z depth, just for us. So if you look under the Z depth tab now, you'll see a button up here called presets. And when you right click, or sorry, when you click it, uh, it'll bring up a list of presets that Autodesk made for us, which is really nice because at the very top here, we have luminance depth. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So we'll click that, uh, the scene turns white, and we get this window here uh, in the attribute editor under this surface shader one tab. Uh, we can name this whatever we want because it's our own special shader that we're making. Um, so I don't know, Z depth shader. We did it. Okay, so that's named. You don't have to name it, it's fine. Um, but what we do need to do is go under here to output color and click this little arrow with the box because we want to change the colors that come out of the shader. Um, so now we'll see these settings and if you're familiar with your clipping range on your camera you'll recognize these. Uh, this is your minimum clipping range, your maximum clipping range. Um, that's just what the camera has by default. I think these are linked. You'll notice that um, their yellow fields um, have been linked to something. I think they're linked to the camera's default uh, clipping field, uh, but I don't want this because I'm not getting the right effect here. So what we'll have to do is click inside one of these yellow ones. Um, I'm going to start with old min. I'm going to right click it and break the connection because I don't want this minimum distance to be dependent on anything but what I type in. Um, the same goes for the old max. I'm going to be adjusting these myself too, so I want to break the connection. Now in these channels that we unlocked, we can start putting our numbers in to get the effect that we're looking for. So in here I'm going to put 5, uh, and in, in old max I'm going to put 30, just to see. Um, so you should start seeing the effect to some degree. Um, you will have to mess with these numbers depending on your scene. For my scene these numbers seem to work out pretty well, um, but if you have a, a larger scene, if you're working on a larger scale, you'll want to use bigger numbers. If you have a smaller scale, you want to use smaller numbers. So to explain what these numbers are actually doing, um, old min is taking the value that you put and measuring the distance from your camera into the scene. So five units from your camera is where it's putting perfect white and then from there till 30 is a gradient to perfect black. So that's kind of how the Z depth is working there and if um, now that you know that you can just mess around with these numbers until you get the right effect you want. So you'll see um, as you change them, you'll get different effects. Like this is lit, lit into the scene, light in the scene, um, because now I've placed the the black point in my gradient to 50 units away instead of 30. So it's actually lightened up my scene, moved that point back, 
but if I pull back, you'll start seeing that gradient coming back. Um, so it's it's pretty uh, good visual feedback, which is why I really like this technique. So do that again. Once you're happy with the values that you put in here and your Z depth and everything is looking fine in the scene, you can render this out. And because we're using viewport 2.0, our renders are gonna look identical to what we see in our viewport. In case you're not seeing the same thing in your renders, just double check here in the settings and make sure you're using Maya Hardware 2.0. That way it shares the same properties as your viewport when it renders. So you'll click render and you'll get just the same old thing. Same thing you saw in the viewport, which is super convenient and really fast. Once you've rendered out your Z depth, you can come right over here to the channel box tab and down here in the render tab, you can select your master layer again and this will hide the Z depth. That way you can render this out, take the two renders and composite them however you like. So that way you get your depth of field or your um, your fog or whatever you're, you're using the, the mask for, the, the Z depth for. So that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope you found this tutorial useful and you're able to use this technique somehow in the future. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye-bye.